Hello and welcome to another video from the only channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's video is going to be about my life experiences with the Veterans Administration. That's the VA, the VA hospital. And why am I making this video? Well, I've got quite a few subscribers that are veterans and uh, they're not taking advantage of the Veterans Administration facilities and it's basically for, for the vast majority of people who do, do time in the military, that's the only benefit you're ever going to be able to take advantage of, and you might as well. Now, there are times when it may not be beneficial to you. Like if you're in a job where you're absolutely forced to have some really expensive insurance that pays for anything, and you get to go anywhere, and they give you whatever prescriptions you want, then that might be, you might feel better with that. I don't know that it's better, it might be, but you may feel better knowing that you get to choose what, what service you want and what pills you want, and uh, you don't want to go to some facility where they make those decisions for you. But the reality is a lot of us don't stay in that situation forever. As you get older, you eventually retire, now your, your insurance is out of pocket, and uh, it's more than you can afford and a lot of times you have to change insurances so that the amount that you pay out of pocket is greater than what it was when you were working and so at this point you may not even have the money to pay all those out of pocket expenses now the reason i know about this is because uh, i've been in the va system for many years but when i was uh when i was in it my dad was not he was in the civilian workforce and he got, uh, he got eventually retired, and his health started to deteriorate, and his out-of-pocket expenses for his prescriptions got astronomical. And I don't really remember what they were, but it seems like it was $300 or more, maybe $500 a month, that he was paying out-of-pocket for prescriptions. And so I told him, Dad, you just take your medical report records from your doctor to the VA. They'll have a doctor there look at them and they'll give you all your prescriptions for free because you don't have an income that's, that's great enough to disqualify you from getting free medical through the VA. And he had a good, you know, he had did an honorable discharge. So uh, we went down there and it wasn't totally true. The doctor did make him retake all of his blood work, you know, go down and check to make sure that the prescriptions that he was taking from his previous doctor were right for him. Now, the, the result was that actual fact that he was paying all this money for prescriptions and within a week he was getting all his prescriptions through the VA and never paid for a prescription again. Now one of the, the problems that people uh, have or perceive about the VA is that you get inferior medicine. Well the reality is that when we went down I was, I was already being treated for diabetes and my dad was being treated for diabetes. And I knew that my dad's insulin was the same exact insulin that they prescribed from the VA. So they didn't make any changes to anything. You know, they, they gave him the exact same thing at the VA that he was already getting through his civilian doctor. Uh, but when it came for his oral medications, I was on a medicine called metformin. My dad was on an or, uh, oral medication that was called glucophage. From what I understand, glucophage is the name brand version of metformin, which is generic. It's the same exact stuff, supposedly. And so they moved my dad from his uh, glucophage to the, v the VA's version, which was metformin, the same medicine I was on. As far as I know, my dad experienced absolutely no bad side effects, no good side effects. When he moved from the VA system, uh, from the civilian system into the VA system, his health did not change, other than the fact that every day he got a little worse from the time he was about 70 till the time he died. It had nothing to do with changing over to the VA. Now, I had an uncle, same situation, and he struggled until it got to the point where he was absolutely broke, and he absolutely could not get his medicines anymore because he couldn't pay for them. And so by him getting into the VA, he actually just got medicines that he just couldn't have gotten anywhere else. And so that's, that's something to think about, you know. And, and right now, I'm not that sick. Uh, all of my medical expenses total would probably be less than $2,000 a year. But, you know, I'm making $14,000 $14, a year now. That's my income that I have to live on. I can't, you know, I'm not going to get any more anywhere else. 
And so $2,000 a year is a lot of money for me. But even if you're a millionaire with a mansion and a yacht and a helicopter and all that stuff, it seems to me that most people who are in that situation struggle every month to pay for their mansions, their helicopters, and their yachts. And $2,000 is uh, still better than nothing. But I think people like that, their brains don't work right, so they're not going to ever go to the VA no matter what because, you know, they're in that hierarchy. They want everybody to look up to them. You know, in general, they don't look up to you when you when you're in the VA system. So you have to have the best of the best of the best, even if it's not any better than the worst of the worst. Now, some of the problems that people perceive about the VA are not, from my own personal experience, are not real. You know, a while back, they had a really big stink in the networks about how the VA was not taking care of, you know, our freedom fighters coming back, missing arms and legs, and being forced to sit in dirty rooms and seeing inferior doctors. And, uh, you know, I haven't been to every VA hospital in the world, but I've been to a few of them, and they're all just like any other hospital. I've never seen any substantial difference between civilian hospitals and Veterans Administration hospitals or the service you get. You know, my mom's in her 70s. Uh, I have to take her to the doctor every now and then, take her to the hospital for procedures every now and then. When my dad was nearing death, you know, it was a regular thing for me to be at the hospital or the doctor's office every week with him. And so I got to see the civilian side of medicine. And I obviously I see the Veterans Administration side of medicine. And uh, I don't think that any, you know, every hospital is a little different, but there is no substantial difference in cleanliness or, or nice facilities. There, in fact, the facility I go to is the Biloxi Veterans Administration Hospital, and it was uh, completely rebuilt after Hurricane Katrina. You can go in there. The hallway in that building between the, the different offices is probably, my house would fit in there. It's probably 40 or 50 foot wide hallway. And the floors, you can see your reflection. And every floor in that facility, there's probably 30 buildings over there. You know, they got a different building for everything. Prosthetics is over here. Uh, you know, heart management's over here. There's just, it's like a state-of-the-art facility, and if I was to go 100 miles in any direction, I would not find a medical facility anywhere that's as good as the facility at Biloxi because it's all brand new stuff. So, you know, I think probably the, the networks were told to put that information out by the government just because the government could not keep up with this new influx of veterans from the current series of wars that are going on. And so they put a little bad publicity out there so that a lot of veterans coming home just wouldn't even try the VA. They'd go somewhere else and solve the problem for a while. And I really believe that. I'm not just like some kind of conspiracy theorist nut. I've seen how things work for 55 years now, and that seems to be a standard pattern. Now, one of the problems you're going to come, up, come, come across is that uh, VAs have inferior doctors. Well, here, here's a situation. The worst doctor in the world can diagnose tonsillitis or a broken leg or the vast majority of problems that people are going to show up with at a medical facility. Now, if you've got something weird wrong with you that doctors can't figure out, for, it doesn't matter where you go. The doctor is not going to tell you he can't figure your problem out. They're going to just throw parts at you like a mechanic does when your car ain't working and they can't figure that out. And then when you die, you know, that's your own fault. It's not your doctor's fault. And that's, that's everywhere. That's whether you get a, you know, a really, really stupid doctor or a brilliant doctor. You're, you know, God bless you and hope the best for you. But if you get something weird, you're just in trouble. You have to acknowledge that. Um, I've heard that, you know, the doctors at the VA don't know how to speak English. Well, basically, race, racist don't like people from other countries. So if you're a racist and you don't like white people or you're a racist and you don't like black people or you're a racist and you don't like Muslims or, you know, people from another country, then if you're in a civilian facility, you can completely leave that facility and go to a completely different facility. Well, if you're in a VA system and you don't like people of certain race or, or nationality, and you complain, they will move you. But what they're going to do is they're going to move you from this doctor to this doctor. And these guys probably play golf together. And so, you know, you went from a problem of being seen by someone of an inferior race. Now you're being seen by your enemy because this guy is mad at you for dissing his buddy. 
So that's a pro if you're a racist, it's a good idea not to go to the VA. If you go there, you know, you got a 50-50 chance you're going to see somebody that's the same color as you, from the same part of the world as you. But there's always possibility that they're going to hook you up with some doctor that is not the same race as you or from the same country as you. And uh, problem here's another problem you're going to come across is that uh, if you go to the VA, you're going to get a different doctor every time. There is some truth to that because you know they do move people around and people retire, people quit, uh, people go on to civilian world, and so you yeah you'll see that. And whereas probably if you've got really good insurance, you're going to a civilian doctor, then you might end up with the same doctor every time. And it may be that your doctor knows you by by name. You see him at the grocery store and he remembers you. And maybe you grew up together. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I have that kind of relationship with with uh, any of my doctors, but maybe I do. You know, I'm the tallest middle-aged white man in South Mississippi with dreadlocks, so it's kind of hard to forget me. Uh, very good possibility that if my doctors were to spot me at the store, they would say hello. Uh, I might not know who they are. They would know who I am. But that's not all that important because even in the civilian world, you go see your doctor in general, he's going to check your blood work to make sure you don't have some kind of fatal disease. And if he finds out you got a fatal disease, he's going to send you to a specialist. So you, even in the civilian world, when everything's working right and everybody stays where they're supposed to be, when things go wrong, you're going to have to see a different doctor. So if you go to the VA and every week you see a different doctor, just know that that's not that much different from being in the civilian world and actually having a medical condition because when that happens you're going to get sent off somewhere else. Um, inferior prescriptions. Now when my my dad and my uncle were going to the doctor for years paying a lot of money they had well my both of them, my dad and my uncle both had really good insurance so they never really saw a bill until they got to retirement age and then they had to pay for their own insurance herself and the insurance they got had uh, more out-of-pocket expenses involved and so my one my uncle was actually not even able to pay for any of his stuff anymore so he had no money in the bank and he had almost no income and uh, his insurance was really leaving him holding the bill on a lot of stuff and my dad he could take care of it but you know it's like three hundred dollars a month five hundred dollars a month something like that uh, just out of pocket for his prescriptions and by going to the VA he did not have that problem you see uh, at the VA everything is free if you qualify if you're in that threshold and they don't have like different drugs for poor people than they do for rich people I mean they kind of do but it's not real uh, when when my dad went to the VA with me I was uh, already diagnosed as diabetic my, my dad was diabetic and so we both had to have similar medications now the the, the insulin that they give you in the civilian world is identical same exact stuff that they give you at the VA but like the oral medications I was on a product called uh, metformin which is what I'm still on my dad was on glucophage glucophage is simply the name brand version of the generic version the generic version being metformin when they moved my dad over from glucophage to metformin it made no difference detectable difference in his health uh, the way he took it the way he felt afterwards it was all identical uh, never experienced any kind of problem with that. So uh, the thing is, it it uh, there is a difference, but it's a d difference of perception. If you absolutely refuse to take generic anything, then once again, you may want to just stay out there in the civilian world. If you can't afford what's in the civilian world, then you may have no options. You may have to take advantage of your Veterans Administration benefits. <sighs> Now, how, now we're going to talk about how what it takes to get into the Veterans Administration. I don't know all the rules. I think when I was uh, in the military, once you served 30 days, you were eligible for all your benefits if you got anything other than a dishonorable discharge. If you got a good conduct discharge, then I know for sure that after a so, certain amount of time you could get in. And a lot of times, if you get kicked out of boot camp, it will be because of some medical problem. And so if, if a medical problem develops when you're in recruit training, then I think you automatically are qualified for Veterans Administration benefits for the rest of your life, even for problems that aren't uh, related to that problem. So it's not a big deal to get in there, but there are uh, a whole bunch of lawyers that are 
employed by the VA. It's just like any other hospital. You know, the civilian hospitals, the pharmaceutical corporations have got lawyers. Uh, the doctors themselves have lawyers. The insurance companies have lawyers. And every one of them lawyers is there to make your experience just a little worse than it needs to be. And the same is true with the VA. If you go to the VA, probably for every doctor down there, they've got two lawyers. The doctor's there to make sure that you can take care of your health. The lawyers are there to make sure you don't get to see the doctor. And so they've got this little ritual of uh, jumping through hoops that they want you to do, but it's not all that involved. It may be a little degrading, but it doesn't take a lot of resources. They want you to fill out a little bit of paperwork. Uh, initially, they may deny you access to the VA on some silly little loophole that isn't even real, like a typical thing that they do which you may or may not experience, is you go to the VA, you fill out all the paperwork, you give them your DD-214, which is your discharge, and then they send you a letter saying, we cannot confirm that you are in the military. Well, you gave them a DD-214, they press a few buttons on a computer, they can confirm that you're in the military, but they want you to jump through hoops. They're really hoping that you'll simply go to a civilian hospital so they don't have to deal with you. But uh, in general, it's not that big of a deal. You take your DD-214 down to the courthouse. There's some kind of public records there. And you, you show them that, and some lower-level clerical worker will stamp an approval stamp on your DD-214, and you bring it back. And they may try to, to scam you some other way. But in general, as long as you're only going after uh, benefits, uh, medical benefits, and they're not going to do anything. Now, if you start trying to get some, some kind of compensation for disability, then they're going to go put you through this whole rigmarole about how you were never in the service or when you were in the service, you were not stationed where you said you were stationed. Or, you know, if you lost your arm in, a, in some kind of combat, they're going to tell you that they believe you lost your arm at the airport, you know, some kind of way to keep out of paying you. But... You know, it's just, uh, as long as you're just going to go to the hospital to see a doctor, in, in general, all you have to do is get them to accept your DD-214. And it's not that big of a deal. You know, don't give up. If you give up that easy, you know, it's hard for me to understand how you can get through life because basically everything in life is jumping through hoops. And the hoops you got to jump through the VA are not as bad as a lot of the hoops you got to, that you have to jump through. Now, as far as billing goes, you know, when you sign up for the VA, it's like, well, when you sign up for the military, it's like they're going to make sure you're taken care of forever. That's in your contract. But when you get out, it's not quite that clear cut. You know, they give you a letter. When you're, when you're leaving your ship or your, whatever your duty station is, they're going to give you a letter saying, welcome to the VA system. It's going to have this whole letter of introduction about we are the VA. We want to take care of you. Please come and see us for your initial discharge physical. Uh, which you get a discharge physical from the military, but after you get out of the military, they want you to get a discharge physical through the VA as well, but it's not mandatory. But when you take that letter down there, the, the people at the front desk act like they've never seen one of them letters before, and they do everything they can to dissuade you from getting your benefits. They tell you, ask you to fill out insurance papers, and you're like, I don't have insurance. Well, who's going to pay for this? Just ignore all of that because uh, the main thing you got to worry about when you get in, once you're accepted, is filling out what's called a means test. And the means test is simply a, a statement where you tell them your name, address, phone number, and then how much, what your income is, and how many members you have in your family. So if you don't, if you don't want to divulge that information, just go home, go get a regular civilian doctor, and he'll ask you the same information. But in general, if you want free medical at the VA, you've got to prove to them that you're below their threshold, their financial threshold. And so you have to fill that paper out. In general, they're going to look at it. They're not going to send you a bill for anything. If you're over the threshold, you know, they've got different levels where, you know, every prescription is $4 as opposed to, like, some, some medicines are thousands of dollars. At the VA, it's still only $4 from what I understand. I don't have any of those but that's, that's the way uh, it was explained to me. So, you know, if you, if you go to the VA and you fill that out, you're not going to get a bill, but you have to fill out a means report every year. Here's the rule. This is the rule I go by, and it's the rule that you need to go by if you get into the VA system. Every time you walk through the door, go to the window at the reception desk, 
ask for a means test and fill it out. Just, you know, completely saturate the system with means test because the first time that you miss, you get tw 12 months in one day, they're going to start billing you. And then if you don't pay the bill, they're going to send that off to the Department of Treasury. The Department of Treasury has an uh, office or Department of Fiscal uh, Liability or Fiscal Responsibility. The, the next letter you get after you start getting a system of bills, a series of bills, if you don't go down there and take care of that, you're going to get a letter from the Department of Treasury saying that they're taking the money out of your Social Security. And they don't just take it out what you owe. They have a, a system where they charge you for the service of taking it out of your disability. So a bill that's you know relatively small, like a $20 bill, can cost you $100 because of this legalism that they incorporate. So you just need to fill out a means test every time. And if you skip and you get a bill, I don't care what it's for. If it's just for $0.25, cents, stop what you're doing, go to the VA, fill out a means test, and then go to the accountant or the cashier's window and tell them, I'm not paying this, I've already, and I don't care what it is, if it's a penny or 25 cents, do not let them charge you for that bill because they'll use that as a wedge to start charging you for all kinds of stuff. So just, if you just make a point of filling out a means test, you're not gonna get billed. I've never had a problem. There's a few times when I've gotten billed, and if I'll tell you this, I was throwing the bills away for about a year, and when I went down there to take care of it, they said, too late, you can't fix this, you owe us 300, I don't remember what it was, but it was like almost $400. So I got stuck. I got shafted because of some little wedge that they were able to get in there through some legalism by simply not reminding me to fill out my means test. And the first reminder I got was a bill. So that's one of the, that's the one bad thing about it. But as long as you do that, you don't get billed for anything. You know, it saved my dad thousands of dollars in the, in the final years of his life. It saved my uncle thousands of dollars over the course of my life. It saved me thousands of dollars. You know, I have a medical condition. Uh, I cannot take care of it without medicine. I have to see a doctor. I have to get blood work. And so, you know, this is, uh, the VA handles that for me. And I don't see uh, any way that a civilian doctor could benefit me over the benefits I get from the VA. So that's basically it. If you if you are a veteran, you've got a, even if you've got a if you've got a bad conduct discharge and you were not in the maximum no, or the minimum number of days to get your benefits, you can actually go see you know a, a veterans administration attorney and file for an appeal and maybe still get your veterans benefits. Oh well, as always, you know, I'm just trying to help you out. If you're a veteran and you are not taking full advantage of the Veterans Administration, you really need to think about it. And as always, if you do not wish to survive, don't listen to me.